so there are a lot of easy ways to do an upgrade video. I could focus on what makes your bike lighter or more aerodynamic or perhaps what just makes it cooler and cooler and blingier and perhaps at some point I'll tackle some of these but today I wanted to go over a quick video about four really cheap bike fit upgrades you can do to your bike. Things that are inexpensive that you can do that many of them can have an immediate impact on how well you ride your bike and how comfortable it is, how efficient you are, etc. Some of these are definitely no-brainer type of changes because they only cost a few dollars more. Now the first change is bar tape. Now bar tape might be the most analog thing we have on our bike, but it can make a tremendous difference on our bike because we come into contact with it constantly, obviously. Now many riders will just ride with whatever came on their bike, and this isn't a terrible idea, except that it tends to be generally fairly cheap cork tape that packs out and stretches and loses a lot of its cushion. Now these are fine, but for about $15 or $20 more, you can have a really nice, plush, thick tape. Many of them are polymer type tapes, meaning they're sort of rubberized. They have an ability to be a little bit water resistant too. One of my easy go-to tapes is the Lizard Skins DSP 3.2 millimeter tape. And they come in two other thicknesses, two and a half millimeter and 1.8 but I like the thicker version. I like the more plush feel to that. I found that a little bit more cushioning on the bar uh, can go a long way. It really can take a, a little bit of the edge off of the road buzz that you get. And I just like the way that the thicker tape feels um, on my hand. I like how it makes the bar a little bit larger as well. I have a number of clients that like their bars uh, double wrapped uh, in, in two layers of tape, which makes it even thicker. And also you can kind of make a little bit of a fashion statement as well. But you can also add a, a, a tiny bit extra cushioning by just using some simple gel inserts, or you can even use little strips cut from your old bar tape to contour and pad the bars before you rewrap them in the new tape, as I showed in a previous video. Number two, insoles. Most of the insoles and inserts that come in our cycling shoes are pretty minimalist. They're pretty plain Jane. There's not a whole bunch to them. The insides of our shoes are also pretty minimalist, pretty, pretty, there's not a whole lot going in there as far as shaping and contouring, much less than we would see on our uh, walking or running shoes. Now, hot spots, numb toes, uh, foot pain are super common on the bike, and a lot of times they can be remedied just by some simple foot support um, that often cycling shoes don't have. Now, custom orthotics are one thing. However, it's hard to justify a three or four or five hundred dollar price tag on these, especially when most custom orthotics aren't made for cycling. Um, they're going to be made for walking or running, and so they it generally won't help much with our mechanics on the bike. But the good thing is is that most cyclists don't need custom solutions. They just need a little bit of foot support, uh, something to support the arch and support the metatarsals, and this will often, like I said, go a very long way. A basic over-the-counter over set of inserts can work wonders on a rider, but there is one main rule for using over-the-counter or any other type of insole, and it's that you can't add an insole to an already snug shoe. Unfortunately, cycling shoes tend to be very low volume already. And so there's not a lot of space. There's not a lot of uh, volume inside, not a lot of real estate. And so if you take the very, very thin insert out of there and you replace it even with a slightly larger uh, over-the-counter one or custom um, insert, it's going to take up too much space. And so trying to solve a foot or a toe problem with an, an insole, you can actually create new problems because now putting this larger volume um, insole into the shoe can all of a sudden take up a little too much space and we end up increasing the tightness of the shoe. And this then leads to other foot trouble. So be careful adding an insole. You may have to wait even to add a low profile insole, which is what I usually recommend, is find the lowest profile over-the-counter insert you can get, which I really prefer these Ice Bug Slim Fit soles. I've done, I've tested a number of different um, over-the-counter inserts and these work really well. And I like the way that the metatarsal cushioning uh, lines up from my feet. It's just set a little further forward. But even an insole like this in some very snug shoes might cause a problem. So you might need to wait until you upgrade to new shoes down the road in order to add an insert into the equation. Number three is a stem. Now, the stem is probably the single most common large change I make to at any person's bike fit. And I'm not saying that everybody needs a, a bar position change. However, it often is a really easy and simple and cheap solution for someone who's been struggling with their fit. If you're not sure what length and rise you need, which many people aren't, 
I really recommend that people, you can find a friend or acquaintance that you can borrow a stem from. Many cyclists that I know have piles of old equipment from past bikes uh, and would be more than happy to lend you something. Now, even the, bar the borrowed stem doesn't even have to be the perfect fit. And chances are it's not going to be. It just needs to be something different than what you have. I would venture to guess that most cyclists that are struggling with their bike fit uh, would benefit from a stem that either is shorter or has more rise or both. Now, this isn't always the case, but predominantly this is the way it, the way it goes. And so if you borrow a stem from a friend or an acquaintance, and it is much shorter than you need. Perhaps you have this longer 110 millimeter stem and all they have for you to borrow is an 80. Trying it will still give you an idea of whether this is the correct direction to go. Because if you put this stem on there, this short 80 millimeter stem, even if it's too short, you may still decide that, hey, it helped with your saddle trouble or your hands are more comfortable on the bike or you don't have the neck pain. So you know that shorter is likely the correct direction to go. And perhaps then you, you know, knowing better, you split the difference. And instead of going from the 110 to the 80, you go from a 110 to a 90 or a 95. And at a cost of only, you know, 40 to $70, a stem is a really cheap way to go about improving things. Now, the last one, number four is new cleats. We all struggled when we first got new, when we first got clipless pedals to clip in and clip out in, in that learning curve. But we all learned very quickly that we benefited from the cleat wearing in over time. The, every time we exit and enter the pedal, it tends to wear down the pedal in, a, in a, a cleat in a certain way, and it makes it a little bit easier to engage. But when the cleats wear even further, this is when things can go south. And it's not only the clipping and clipping out, it's also the walking on the cleat that tends to wear it down. And suddenly over time, when it wears too much, now the cleats can develop some slop where they're sort of rattling around inside. And this can result in all sorts of weird motions occurring at the foot. Now, some cleats are more prone to this, especially the plastic SPDSL, or the look Kios, which usually need to be replaced on an annual basis uh, with consistent riders. The metal SPDs tend to hold up pretty well, and in fact, I think they're hard enough. They, they tend to do more damage to the pedal, although the, the SPDs and the, their pedals tend to last a, a, a number of years in most cases. Speed plays are a little different. The engagement mechanism is, is a little bit different in that the spring is in the uh, cleat, and that there's a little thin metal plate over the top of it, but it's the walking on this plate that causes it to uh, wear down and get thinner and this puts pressure on the uh, spring uh, and so over time it can get difficult to clip into a pedal and to clip out of a pedal because of this. Now most cleats, except the speed plays of course, are fairly cheap, anywhere from 20 to $40 and it really can make a huge difference when you get new cleats and you clip in and you have that very connected and grounded feeling where you can then you know generate power from. So you've heard of cheap speed, this is cheap comfort. And so the next time you have the opportunity to, where you have to replace one of these things, you might think about splurging and spending a few bucks more because it might make a pretty tremendous difference in how you ride your bike. You might just find yourself riding more comfortably and longer, which is the point after all, right? So that's all I had for this one. Thanks everyone. I will see you in a couple of days on the next video. Peace.